Greetings, Basketeers. Josh Fosgreen here with another Jocko Lick for us to steal because they're so fun to play. Uh, this one will work over various dominant-ish kind of funky situations. You can make what use of it you will. Um, this particular iteration of it comes from the live version of Teen Town that's on Weather Report's Jocko Years compilation. However, I'm sure it appeared on an actual Weather Report album. I'm not sure which one it was. Uh, and Jocko played this in a lot of different places. This is just the first one I could think of. And it sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so that's the basic idea. It's a really fun lick. Um, it's obviously kind of fast. Maybe I'll do a slow down play along for us today just for fun. Uh, download the PDF. You'll be able to follow along with the sheet music and the tablature. Uh, what I do not have written out on the PDF is the left hand and right hand fingerings that I want to talk you through today. But first of all, for those of you who are anxious to start playing right away without me actually teaching you anything, because I know you're out there, uh, let's just play this together at a reduced tempo. Here we go at quarter note equals 100 beats per minute. We'll just do a quick playthrough and then we'll talk details on the left and right hands. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, let's do a quick analysis here and then we'll talk through the technique. So we're basically dealing with an E mixolydian scale here, just playing the octave and the, the minor seventh against the root. Uh, and then that first lick is is just the third, fourth, and the fifth walking up. And then the fill at the end, we do get a little bit of chromaticism there, which is something Jocko did a lot. So we're going three, four, sharp, four, leading into the fifth, and then five, six, nine to, to one. Um, so it's basically dominant. Um, you could adapt this to work over minor. Sounds cool. I've never actually done that. Um, so like a lot of Jocko licks, you can adapt them to different situations, but let's just deal with version we have for starters. Um, so left hand on this, um, for most of it, you can have a very relaxed, uh, left hand covering a three fret span. You've just got seventh fret and then open uh, seventh fret with the index and then go pinky for the octave. And then for the seventh, I really like doing this index partial bar thing. Okay, so I'm getting those two notes with the same finger. I think that's how Jocko would have played it. I'm not positive, but the, the alternative is to go. So to get the second finger in there, I'm not a big fan of that. I really like to do the index finger bar thing, especially in funky kind of situations where I'm using the kind of flat handed, mutey, less articulate approach with my left hand. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. Uh, index, pinky, and then index, and then um, when we do the fill at the end of bar two, we just go middle, in, <laughs> middle, index, middle, pinky. Okay, and then uh, bar three we've already covered, and then bar four. I'm briefly going to one finger per fret for that walk up. And then I'm switching back to the three fret span for those last few notes, the B, the C sharp, the F sharp, and the E, okay? So the general principle here is stay as relaxed as possible, kind of keep the fingers close and, and relaxed. Um, you see a lot of bass players doing that in kind of funky styles, especially like if you watch some Rocco Presti of Tower of Power, his hand just looks like this all the time. It just looks like he's not doing anything, but clearly he is because it sounds amazing. Um, okay, so back to Jocko, from Rocco to Jocko. Uh, so that's the left hand, it's not too hard. The right hand can be a little tricky on this, so I actually want to talk you through the specific fingering I'm using. This is not the only fingering that would work. This is what I tend to do, and I usually don't stumble too hard on it. So, uh, first two notes, there's a lot of raking involved here, is the first is just a quick general note I'll tell you. This is a very reiki style of playing. This kind of, not the Japanese healing art, uh, <laughs> R-A-K-E-Y. 
Um, so there will be a lot of rakes involved in this fingering. So, so from the top we go index, index, and then take the high notes with the middle finger. Just go index, middle, back and forth, index on the lows, middle on the highs. Um, that's what tends to work best because your middle finger is a little longer than the index. Then when we get to the fill at the end of bar two on, on beats three and four, we go uh, index on the E, and then we're going two, one, two, one, two, one on that walk up, which then lets us rake back to one, one to start bar three. So that fill at the end of bar two is one, two, one, two, one, two, one, one, one. And that loops us back around. Bar four is probably the trickiest spot for the right hand. So here we're going index on the E, and then middle, index and then here I actually reset to my index again for the uh, for the A sharp so index middle index index middle hammer and then index 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 on that rake so that the two X is there and then the B that's all index so from the beginning of that bar index middle index index middle hammer index 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 hammer index middle index middle so then I'm actually ending up on the repeat of the pattern on my second finger and then I rake that and then I just jump it. I've got that 16th rest there to jump it back to how we were fingering it the first time around. Okay, so that's how I do it. You could do it without the reset in there. So it would be like index, middle, index, middle, index, hammer, and then rake with the middle. I still tend to end up uh, on the next bar with my middle finger and it doesn't really pose a problem because of the rests that are built into the pattern those give you a chance you can reset your alternating if you need to okay so there's a bunch of uh, names of fingers over and over and over again that's the basic idea let's try playing this together uh, at the slow tempo one more time now that we've talked through that here we go one two three e and a four e and a so that's the lick before we play this together at tempo i just want to say if you're having trouble rhythmically that's probably because this lick involves a sustained period where you're only playing on the e's and the uhs of the beat so the pulse is here and then you have to play e up e up e up e up uh, which sounds really cool when you say it out loud like that. Um, so if you're not used to that, you might want to just practice doing that, like clapping with a metronome or put on a metronome and just play E's and U's. You know, you could practice that with this. And then maybe occasionally land on one just so you can feel the difference. Here's eight notes. So you, you want to be able to feel those E's and U's really well to be able to play this kind of line. And if you can't do that, just start slow, maybe 16th at 60 BPM or something, work it up until you can actually feel those positions in the bar at these kind of tempos, which full tempo here is 132. Let's try that together just for fun. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Whew, that's spicy at that tempo. I love it. Um, so, like I said, you can adapt this to different tonalities by changing some of the notes. Keep the arrangement of where, how many notes are on each string and keep the basic rhythmic template. Um, and you can get a lot of mileage out of these licks besides just the way Jocko played them, uh, like I talked about in the last Jocko lick video I did. So we could do a minor version. You keep the keep the major sixth in there. Also, sometimes Jocko would play that lick with the with the sharp five or the flat thirteen. I guess I would think of it. Uh, So he, he'd kind of ghost it, but so you can create different amounts of tension by like making a 13 a flat 13, make a 9 a flat 9. Just play around. Uh, you can use this in different contexts. Like if you're using it on a dominant chord, you might throw in some of those alterations. Whereas here he's using it on the, on the tonic dominant chord, so uh, not so many alterations. Blah -de blah -de blah. My point is just when you learn licks like this, I think you get a lot more mileage for your education if you try tweaking some of the notes 
um, to make it more your own or just to find some variations rather than just knowing the one version of that Jocko lick. If you can fool around with it, then I think you have more fluid access to it in your playing. Thank you for watching. I hope you've had fun. I certainly have. I, I love Jocko licks. There's just so many good ones to choose from and hopefully you guys enjoy these videos and maybe I'll do a few more of them in the future. Uh, if you'd like to support me in continuing to put out these free videos, I would really appreciate it if you consider joining my Patreon community or buying my books at joshfossgreen.com. Thank you so much for watching. Get those Jocko licks on and I'll see you next time.